Ladies and gentlemen, so welcome here. It's uh, time to start our event uh, today. My name is Andres Klepers. Uh, I'm uh, one representative from Latvia side. We'll moderate the uh, event today. And uh, before we start, uh, I will introduce to some housekeeping rules uh, how we are acting today, uh, how we will use technologies, and of course, a little bit about agenda, and then already the, the big uh, event could start. So today, representatives of municipalities from European Union and Eastern Partner Partnership are welcomed here to participate in online event. Technology is the answer, but what was the question? So during our event, in a dynamic two hours, we will discuss about uh, Green Deal, about uh, Bauhaus initiative, about uh, Green Day, uh, other initiatives, uh, what have been discussed already in the side events uh, today. So I hope that you have been warmed up either by the weather outside, which is just brilliant to participate in our webinar, or by those other events already uh, launched today. And we are ready for uh, the content uh, farther on. Few remarks. So this will be recorded. Uh, if you uh, keep your camera on, you will find your face uh, in recorded archive afterwards as well. So uh, be in comfort with that. If you have the questions, you can use the chat and uh, raise the questions uh, for every of 13 speakers today. So be uh, active. And I would like to ask for the speakers to be ready to react on those questions, even in the chat room, if it's not uh, time uh, to rise and to answer the question immediately after your speech. Please keep uh, an eye on your microphones because they should be switched off uh, when the others are presenting. And please uh, pay attention to our uh, translation. We have uh, working languages in English, but uh, you have the button uh, on the bottom line where you can uh, choose your favorite language and we have a translation service. Uh, yeah, you can use it either Russian Lithuanian or Latvian, uh, you, can, you can use one of those channels. For the speakers, uh, kindly remind that you uh, keep unmuted original audio. So when you use your language and this is uh, translated to you, then uh, just it will be more convenient. That's about housekeeping rules. I hope everybody is excited about next two hours and we are ready to start with our, uh, yeah, with our event. And I would like to invite uh, Gins Kaminskis uh, as chairman of the Latvian Association of Local and Regional Governments, one of two organizers uh, to start event. Please, Gins, the floor is yours. Labdien, es iet sveicināt, cienījumās dāmas, godātie kungi, draugi, pazīmes. Es priecājos, ka mūsu dotais, uzdotais jautājums tehnoloģijas ir atbilde, bet kāds bija jautājums? Ir intriģējis tik daudzus, no tik daudz valstu pašvaldībām. Latvijā, Lietuvā, Igaunijā, Gruzijā, Ukrainā, Moldovā, Azerbaidžānā, Beļģijā, Somijā, Itālijā, Francijā un arī Ziemeļu Maķedonijā. Es domāju, ka tas ir apliecinājums, ka mēs domājam līdzīgi un mums rūp tas, kas notiek mums apkārt. Arhitekts Sebriks Spraiss savu provocējošo jautājumu uzdevu jau vairāk kā pirms 50 gadiem. Taču par šo laiku tas, manuprāt, kļūst vēl aktuālāks. Jautājums, kāds bija jautājums, ja pārfrāzējot, kāpēc mēs vispār to darām, droši vien ik pa laikam mēs uzdodam katrs pats arī sev. Taču, ja domājam par Eiropas Savienības vai globālākiem mērķiem, 
tad varbūt par to aizdomājamies daudz retāk. Jo šķiet, ka tas mūs nemaz neskan, neskar personīgi. Taču tāpat kā zemesloga rapaļa, tāpat arī gaisa plūst pāri robežām upes cektā un caur vairākām valstīm nešķirojot, vai tās atrodās Eiropas Savienībā vai ārpustās. Un arī iedzīvotāji vēlmes pēc tīras vides svaiga gaisa skaistām ilgtspējīgām pašvaldībām visur visās valstīs ir vairāk vai mazāk līdzīgas. Šodien spraucējušais jautājums – Kāds bija jautājums, ir rosinājums mums visiem uz pārdomām, ko mēs varam darīt kopā ar Eiropas Savienības vai Austrumu partnerības iniciatīvu starpniecību, lai ar radošām idejām, intelektuālām inovācijām un arhitektu prasmēm veidotu sev apkārt tādu vidu, kad mēs paši paties vēlamies. Es novēlu jums informatīvu pasākumu, lai top jaunas, ilgtspējīgas pārrobežas sadarbības ierosmas. Paldies jūs! Thank you, Gins Kaminskis, uh, who is not only the chairman of Latvian Association of Local and Regional Governments, but also the member of uh, our uh, partnership towards CIST. Uh, so all the countries were mentioned already, and I should say they are when a keen, uh, very keen public on the other side of uh, all the speakers, so many developers and idea, idea catchers uh, to uh, settle down uh, all the uh, creative impulses from today's discussion. But for opening speech, I would like to invite another uh, person in charge from the organizer's side. Mr. Mindaugas Sinkevičius uh, as a president of the Association of Local Authorities in Lithuania, who is also, also European Covenant of Majors, uh, national ambassador from Lithuania. So, Mr. Mindaugas, uh, your turn to open event. Labadiena, Renginio Dalyvi. Tikiuosi, kad technologijos leidžia mums vieni kitus ir matyti ir girdėti, ir mane girdžita, girdita gerai. Na ką, šis renginys iš tikrųjų skirtas bendradarbiavimo skatinimui tarp Europos Sąjungos ir Rytų partnerystės šalių savaldybių. Ir savotiškai tai tarnavė kaip ir patirties mainai, įgyvendinant aplinkosaugos ir klimato kaitos priemonės vietos lygmenių, o pakankamai gausus dalyvių skaičius matyti suintrigavo ir rodo ir temos aktualumą ir svarbą. Šiandien net ir kada už lango nematomas priešas covidas, turim ir kitų svarbių ir aktualių temų. Ačiū pirmiausia kolegoms Latvijams, gerbiamam mano kolegui Gins, už ir kolektyvui suprantama, kuris gal už, už dekoracijų, už scenos lieka, už darbą kartu organizuojant šį renginį, tai tikrai dar vienas puikus dvišalio bendradarbiavimo pavyzdys. Ir galiu pasakyti turbūt, kaip ir gerbimas kolega Gins, kad parama rytų partnerystės šalims yra tiek Lietuvos, tiek Latvijos užsienio politikos vienas iš prioritetų. Ir šis seminaras, tikime, kad pasitarnaus kaip galimybė būtent sustiprinti abipusį bendradarbiavimą tarp saulybių. Europai klimato kaitos klausimai yra viena iš prioritetinių sričių, manau, kad visi tai žinom. E, ir tai rodo, kad Europos žalesis kursas, bei jo ambicingi tikslai, o tas tikslas priminsiu iki 2050 metų, kad Europa turi būti neutraliu klimatu žemynui ir pereiti prie žaliosios ekonomikos, skatinti žaliasis investicijas ir inovacijas ir panašiai. Na, Tokia strategija, toks tikslas ir tokie prioritetai Europos yra žymintis labai svarbius ir didelius pokyčius įvairiuose sektorius. Nuo klimato iki energijos, energetikos, nuo transporto iki biologinės įvairovės, apsaugos nuo pokyčių žemės ūkių, žiedinės ekonomikos ir, ir kitų dalykų. Ir aišku, kad visi tie pokyčiai, kurie mūsų neišvengiamai laukia, 
įdant prisitaikyti prie klimato kaitos, prie energijos efektyvumo priemonių dėgymo, kaip kasdienybės, tai yra ir neišvengiamas savalybių atsakomybės rytis. Todėl, kuo aktyviau savalybės iš pat pradžių įsitrauks ir įsitrauks kaip nuoseklus vykdytų į gyvendintų, į tuo greičiau mes tos klimato kaitos politikos ambicingus tikslus ir pasieksime visų kartų. Labai sveikintina mano vertinimu yra iniciatyva Merų paktas, kurios savalybės būtent visi pareigoja įgyvendyti klimato kaitos priemonės. Lietuvoje mes turime 16 tokių savalybių, kurios pasirašė Merų paktų ir yra Merų paktų signataris. Aišku, 16 savalybių iš 60 ties, tai gal dar toks nedidelis skaičius ir mano turbūt kaip Merų paktų ambasadorius pareiga yra užtikrinti, kad Lietuvos savalybės kuo intensyviau įsijungtų į šią iniciatyvą, nes tikrai kiekvienas turbūt norim būti pažangus ir klimato kaitos sprendimai iš apačios, sprendimai iš apačios į viršų, matyti tą logiką, jis yra būtina siekiant to ambicingų sėkmės tikslų. Tai aš tikrai nuo širdžiai tikiuosi, kad šis seminaras bus naudingas, nubrėž galbūt naujas kryptis ar gairės, su kurs prielaidas naujom idėjom, artimesnėm tam priam dvi šaliam bendradarbiam ir daugia šalių netgi formatų tarp Europos Sąjungos ir tų partnerystės šalių. Gero naudingo seminaro, dirbkime kartu dėl žalesnės, konkurencingesnės ir traukios Europos. Tai gal baigdamas čia taip dažnai naudojama tokia angliška frazė. Let's work together for a green, competitive and inclusive Europe. Good luck for us all. Thank you. Thanks a lot. That was the speech from host, let's say from both hosts, uh, Mr. Kaminskis from Latvia side and uh, Mr. Sinkevičius from Lithuania side. And we should totally agree that this is the time of empowerment of local authorities uh, because the local governments, they are the, the persons who uh, bring down the big ideas to the reality as uh, it was told for the implementation we are looking here. And I would like to give the floor for the next uh, speaker and this will be already deeper into the subject uh, about the European border and the European Green Deal support for cooperation between EU and Eastern Partnership countries. So Mr. Vasilis Maragos, uh, head of unit for Armenia, Azerbaijan, Belarus and Eastern Partnership from Europe and Commission. The floor is yours and very successful seminar for all the participants. I hope you uh, cope with our translation so you have find the right uh, button and then you are not wondering why the previous speaker uh, voices were a little bit feminine. Uh, that's the right order so you can uh, get uh, that speech uh, translated uh, from any language. So uh, Mr. Uh, Vasilis Maragas, uh, it's your turn. Thank you very much, uh, Professor um, uh, Kleppers. And uh, it is uh, really a pleasure and a honor to, to be here uh, with you, all of you, including uh, the chairman, Mr. Kaminskis, but also uh, Mr. Sinkevicius uh, uh, for uh, their commitment, uh, their inspired speeches, uh, but also the very close uh, cooperation and coordination we have. Uh, Really, uh, congratulations and uh, many thanks uh, for uh, the very inspiring title. I think that uh, this, is, uh, this is really a moment to reflect. When it comes to the Eastern Partnership, we have launched a reflection on the future of the policy back in 2019. That was just before the pandemic, as I'm sure you all recall the time before the pandemic, uh, when we celebrated the 10 years of the Eastern Partnership Policy. As a result of this consultation last year, we made a, a couple of proposals for the future of the Eastern Partnership Policy. 
these proposals have been based uh, on uh, uh, inputs we have received. Uh, they have been based also on our own analysis, our own assessment of the situation, but also uh, very solidly reflect, uh, as I mentioned, the inputs we have received from partners, including the local authorities, but also central authorities, civil society, and individuals. So the proposals that we have, we have made uh, last year in March reflect uh, those, uh, uh, those inputs. So what did we propose? Uh, we proposed uh, to invest in the resilience of our partners based on five main policy objectives. The first was the economy and connectivity. The second was uh, the rule of law, the uh, good governance. And then uh, uh, the focus was on uh, the digital and the green transition and transformation, joint challenges that we face with the partners. And uh, also, uh, we propose to focus on uh, fair and inclusive societies. I think all these objectives are extremely relevant for uh, engagement at the local level and for engagement both on the green and the digital transformation. And uh, beyond uh, these, uh, if you like, uh, general words, we are here talking about uh, uh, things which affect the citizens. We are talking about how we can build back better following the COVID uh, pandemic. Hopefully we are seeing uh, the post pandemic uh, period already, but I think it is essential that we prepare this together very well. Uh, in order to operationalize those uh, 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 general uh, policy objectives, we are in the process of preparing now a set of very concrete targets. For these targets, uh, we're going to build on what we have done together in the past. And I have to say uh, right uh, up front that uh, the work we are doing together under the Covenant of Mayors is one of the most important achievements, I would say, of the previous period. So we have to build on this in order to see how we can uh, create better conditions on the ground for our citizens. And the local authorities, by the way, this was one of the main conclusions of this consultation that I referred to back uh, from the end of 2019, just before the pandemic, the local authorities are and should be a key partner of the EU in this respect. They are very close to the citizens. They are very close to the civil society. They are a key governance actor uh, who represents the state on a daily basis uh, in dealings with the citizen. And of course, they are key when it comes to the green digital transformation, economic development, but also a new uh, priority, we believe, uh, which will become even more apparent in the uh, in in uh, the coming period when we are going to present our new proposals uh, to operationalize, as I mentioned uh, last year's communication on smart mobility, smart mobility and green mobility at the level of the towns, the cities, but also in uh, uh, within the regions will be a key. Um, objectives, objective of our future policy. Now, how are we going to do that? Uh, in the past, as you know, through the Covenant of Mayors, we have invested in, uh, first of all, in sustainable uh, energy uh, action plans. We have provided technical assistance. I think we have done very good work on this. Most of the uh, signatories of the Covenant of Mayors have these, um, these plans. And in parallel, we have also supported demonst uh, uh, demonstrate uh, uh, representative uh, uh, projects, uh, uh, a number of projects in the uh, in the whole uh, in the whole region, to the total amount of uh, around 24 million euro. These have been grant uh, demonstration projects. And uh, these projects have shown the potential for future investments. 
we are ready to continue with the demonstration projects, but I think, we think that it will be essential that we move towards more sustainable investments. These sustainable investments have to be based on thorough preparation, but also the capacity to take loans, loans under very good conditions, loans which pre, uh, uh, bring uh, uh, a return very fast, in particular in uh, cutting energy bills, but also with other uh, commercial uh, economic benefits. We are ready to discuss with the municipalities on all this, but it will be essential that the municipalities invest in uh, strengthening their capacity to manage projects so that these projects can be implemented uh, on the ground. One other possibility is, and I'm sure within the EU, we have a lot of expertise in this, in for, for instance, working with uh, the European Investment Bank, but also the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development, we can bring together several municipalities to uh, create joint capacities to manage those investment projects. For this, thorough, very good preparation, but also um, capacity to take decisions, to prioritize those projects which have an impact on people's lives, on daily uh, life, but also on uh, the green transformation and the creation of new opportunities are essential. Uh, in moving forward, we are ready to work together through the various uh, associations in each country, across the region, but also together with the European uh, banks, not only the European Investment Bank and the European Bank for Construction and Development, but also other banks, for national development banks who are engaged in the region, in order to prepare those sustainable projects and to further work with the municipalities. As I mentioned, a new area where we would like to comprehensive but very important projects which address mobility issues in uh, places like uh, in uh, cities like Tbilisi for instance with uh, the, the EU uh, with the with the blue uh, buses but also we are now expanding this uh, into uh, a number of cities in Ukraine uh, uh, but also uh, in Georgia and we are ready to see if this or other similar projects on smart mobility providing more comprehensive solutions to uh, to, to, to mobility uh, may be implemented. I will stop here. The EU is a key partner, is your key partner. We are ready through uh, our Brussels teams, but also through the delegations to work together with you in order to assist you in this major effort which is being made. Finally, during the discussion, you are going to discuss uh, a lot about uh, the Bauhaus uh, concept. As you know, this was uh, one of the initiatives taken by President von der Leyen. Thank you very much for uh, bringing this uh, 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 to the agenda of our cooperation on the Eastern Partnership. We believe that uh, such initiatives can be of help. They will create also job opportunities. They will create uh, perspectives. Uh, but also they will allow the use of uh, the technology, as, as you very rightly mentioned, the use of the technology in order to uh, create better conditions for people, uh, for, daily, uh, for the daily life of people. We have invested heavily in energy efficiency in the past. Uh, the Bauhaus concept, I think, gives a new perspective, a more dynamic perspective to renovate to the renovation wave that we already have uh, launched within the EU. And I think it gives also a perspective to young people, designers, architects, uh, energy efficiency specialists, because, and I will close here, because without the youth, without the energy and the talent of the young people in this region, 
we are not going to go very far. So we have to work together with all these partners, including the young people, the young specialists, the young experts, in order to create uh, uh, new conditions, better conditions, but also to invest together in the resilience uh, of, um, of uh, partner countries. This will be essential, in particular, following uh, the COVID uh, pandemic and uh, also uh, focusing on the, uh, on, on the build back better, the post-COVID socioeconomic recovery. Thank you very much, Andris, and uh, looking forward to the discussions later uh, this uh, afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Vasilis Maragos from European Commission. And uh, that was uh, really uh, one of the uh, uh, key messages uh, for today's uh, discussion later on. And uh, I apologize for those who uh, heard with uh, English language, uh, probably some uh, coverage of Latvian. So you you have opportunity to hear how the Latvian uh, uh, voice is like a music. <laughs> but uh, farther on, we will move to the next topic. And uh, I should say that uh, Mr. Vasilis Maragos already mentioned one of uh, very interesting uh, keywords, the sustainable, uh, sustainable investments. And if we speak about small municipalities uh, like Tauragen municipality in Lithuania, which is among the smallest, uh, usually we think as, as local people, we should take any chance as possible. But then uh, Green Deal and sustainable investments uh, give a little bit another aspect uh, how to look on uh, any of those chances. And uh, now to bridge for the next uh, topic, how green is green? With some of the examples from municipalities in Europe, I would like to give the floor for Dovidas uh, Kaminskas, the major of uh, Tauroge Municipality Council. And uh, his challenge will be to approve that really uh, small uh, municipalities can cope with those questions rather as the big ones. So, Dovidas Kaminskis, the floor is yours. And once again, thank you, Vasilis Maragas, for uh, your uh, attention uh, being in our event. Uh, thank you, Andris, for the floor. I would like to thank uh, for the presidents uh, of the uh, municipality associations, Mr. Mino Vasintevichus and Mr. Jens Kaminskis. So Kaminskis is now from Latvia side and now I'm Kaminskis from Lithuanian side as well. So now, now we're even. So I would like to, I would like to show some uh, uh, a presentation, a very short one about uh, what uh, we are doing here in Tauragie. And uh, I'll try just to, to tell what, what projects are the main projects, what uh, spheres of influence we think uh, are the most important in the in this in this world and in this space of the world and uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just start maybe so what were one of our main goals and uh, missions visions is the sustainable and smart public transportation so first of all uh, we have the prepared the sustainable mobility plan which is the main document uh, uh, for for this uh, sphere uh, we have Electric buses right now riding in Tauragie, we have right now three. We bought two more this year, they are coming in the, in the, in the autumn. And we are planning to buy five more electric buses uh, in, in, in this year. So uh, next year, we believe that there will be 33% of, of public transportation used in the, in the city area will be electric. Uh, so it's, it's, it's really, um, good for our citizens. Uh, therefore, we started the free public transportation. We introduced it, we calculated all the risks and, uh, and calculated wh how many money we get from, from, our, uh, from our citizens. Uh, and that uh, amount of money was not really big because uh, we, we take money from those who don't have it because they use public transportation. So uh, we want to, to promote it, to use it more. So when we started uh, the free public transportation, transportation project, we saw so many problems that we didn't see before because people started using, really started using the public transportation. So now we have a lot of problems, but we are very happy because people started using it. 
Uh, also, uh, municipality have electric cars. Uh, we plan in the next uh, maybe two to four years change all of them that in the municipality and until 2030 we can change in all the public sector of Tauradia. We hope that we will do that. Uh, right now we are doing the Tauradia Plus, uh, so uh, Tauradia municipality and four uh, and three other municipalities around us. Uh, we have that regional transport system. Uh, and, and single electronic ticket uh, initiative, uh, and we're doing that pilot project, which is also um, uh, financed by European Union. So we believe that we will have that integrated regional transport system where we can have also uh, one ticket and, and a lot of other uh, good initiatives around that. Of course, the priority is for motorless transport, uh, for, but the infrastructure is not that cheap. So, but the priority is that. And right now, one of the main this year project is the bicycle storage behind the apartment buildings, uh, because uh, uh, we have to, to give the people the opportunity to have uh, the where to put those uh, motorless transport. Uh, so we don't, they don't. So it's good. Uh, how, how to say? So it's a uh, it's not hard for them to take it and use it. So this is, this is the main um, goal for us. Other uh, part is the re renewable energy and energy efficiency. So uh, in Tauragia municipality and several others uh, behind us, we have the largest wind power plant park in all the Baltic states. Uh, so we have uh, more than 20 solar power plants on all the public building roofs, on the municipality building, on kindergarten, on schools, on uh, on hospital buildings, and even on uh, on on some religious buildings. So we are planning right now. Uh, Ninety-nine percent of our central heating energy comes from biomass. Uh, we used uh, two years ago. We we had the ESCO model for street lighting, and we renewed more than uh, three thousand five hundred illuminators in, in all the municipality. So not in, only in the city, but in all the villages. And we, we get more than 50% uh, less energy consumption. And uh, before we turned off the lighting during the nighttime in, in the smaller villages, but right now we, we, are, we are we having the electricity 24-7. Uh, so not only we, we, we consume less energy, but we give much better service for, for the citizens. And right now we are preparing to, to have or to buy it, a remote solar power plant. To, to give the renewable and, and green energy to the to the lighting of, of the all the municipality street lights. Uh, of course, one of the main things are renovation of public apartment buildings, uh, and we are the leaders in Lithuania in this field. But of course, this is a decision of uh, central government and the people themselves uh, because they have to take the decision to, to renovate. But our our citizens uh, want to renovate, but not. Uh, everyone gets the renovation that they want. So we need to, to, to push for, forward in, in this field and during the, in, in the central uh, government. And of course, the renovation of public buildings. So right now, I think in, in Tauradia municipality, we have uh, maybe up to 10 buildings that are not renovated and not energy efficient. So we are doing this very fast and, uh, and, and, and because energy efficiency is one of the main goals in the municipality. Uh, third priority is the smart and healthy community. So um, we are preparing the STEAM center uh, right now in modern labs and schools. So last year we uh, invested into four, uh, four uh, modern labs in, in, in various schools. This year we hope we, we can start with a regional STEAM center in, in our city. We, we, we have a project of creativity entrepreneurship lab for for school, school students, so they have to be prepared to be uh, to be to have those entrepreneurial skills because I think this is the main point for the young persons right now to to, to be prepared for the world that they are uh, going to live in. Uh, of course, one of the main things is the competency building for teachers. Uh, we have those innovative teachers, Litek and junior achievement programs for them. Uh, we are rewarding students and teachers for good results, uh, more than 25,000 a, a year. We have co-working space uh, in, in, uh, of entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship centers, PHS, where all the young businesses can have uh, their uh, 
uh, working space and they can have all the uh, information uh, they need uh, from one uh, from uh, one uh, how, how to say window uh, yeah other, other than that we opened at swimming pool last year because but we can't work because of the pandemics uh, we are beginning to, to build a sports and culture culture center uh, we can, you can see it in the right corner uh, Priorities for sustainable tourism because we have only almost 40% of the, all the municipalities covered by forest. We have national reserve forest, we have regional park forest. So we, we, we have to put uh, a much bigger priority in this field so people can spend much more time uh, in the environment, uh, in, in the forests. Uh, they can have those forest bathing and all the energy levels uh, go up. So we have to this one. and. Uh, and other other one priority is of course the business friendly municipality. We have to create the opportunity for businesses to come to create the working places, but of course they have to be uh, not uh, not uh, related to chemistry and, and and all the other things. But it's a it's 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 a big big uh, uh, challenge I would say. And of course uh, when we are talking about the municipality, we have uh, we are. Our mission and vision is that we are open and ready for change. So we already prepared the 10-year strategic plan, and which is based on SDGs, some of the SDGs. We want to implement the key indicators for sustainable development and, uh, and to show it to the public so everybody can see how we are doing in some of the fields. We created some uh, pages uh, where the project management page, uh, job offer pages, uh, and all the an annual municipality reports, uh, it's, everything is online. We are networking with the expatriates. Uh, we have the Worldwide uh, Honor Ambassadors Network, which uh, this initiative uh, beginning, began, began when we tried to, to, to um, to try to come back those people that are living in in, uh, in other countries. The last, uh, I mean, this week we started with part of participatory budget where where the citizens get involved in the in every in every uh, project that they want to be, and we have ambition to become the greenest municipality in Lithuania and maybe um, become the European Green Leaf Award to get the European Green Leaf award uh, and the Vexu, as you can see, the, the greenest city in Europe, as they say in, 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 in Sweden. So we want to go this way and maybe become um, in the near future, the European Green Leaf. And uh, as, as, uh, as everybody said before, we have, we have to be uh, the proactive leadership is one of the most important things. So our we think that we are too small to change the world, but big enough to show example. I think that's that's how all municipalities should uh, look at this uh, sustainability future. Because when we see like when we see a future like that, uh, then we can we can we are uh, like one by one we are too small to change the world. But together, uh, if we want to show to show the example and then together, then we can change the world. So that's the short presentation. Thank you very much, Anders. Thank you. Thank you, Davides uh, Kavinsky. Uh, that was uh, very good uh, presented. Uh, you definitely should have a strong team behind you to cope with all those projects and good access to loans uh, to keep them going because a lot of progress you showed. From another side, you definitely uh, uh, proved uh, for all the other audiences that uh, the Green Deal ideas, they go in all the autonomous functions of the municipality. Actually, we can see the touches in many of, of those aspects. Uh, thanks for your presentation. And you already made a nice invitation for the next one, because being small is not a shame. But when you unite with similar, so that's the power. And we are uh, going uh, with our um, program farther on to the next uh, National Association of Local Authorities, uh, this time from Georgia. And uh, Executive Director David Meloa will be the next speaker about the green transformation activities from this Eastern Partnership side. So the best practices and examples from municipalities in Georgia. 
David, floor is yours and we are ready to listen. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chair. It's my pleasure to be invited to um, this event, presenting uh, best cases of Georgian municipalities in energy efficiency and uh, green transformation. Uh, Mr. Maragos has already mentioned city of Tbilisi and um, impressive reformation of city transformation system, making it more energy efficient and uh, environmental friendly. However, there are some more good examples in regions of Georgia and uh, especially in um, small and medium sized municipalities. Um, so it's my pleasure to present uh, some uh, examples developed by Georgian municipalities and I have prepared the presentation, which I will share now. So I, I hope it's visible on your screen. So first of all, I would like to make a brief brief. Just you can make it a bit bigger for the whole screen. Uh, just just a minute, just a minute. I... Okay, is it okay now? Yes. Yes. Okay. So first, I would like to make a general reference to the legal framework. And um, uh, here we have got a uh, organic law on local cell government code, which assigns a wide range of competencies to local authorities. And among, among them, there are some competencies which are environmentally sensitive and have a uh, very big impact on um, uh, act the energy efficiency and uh, in, in environmental activities of um, public administrative bodies and such competencies of local authorities are uh, usage of natural resources resources of local importance uh, promotion of local economy that includes a promotion of green economy indeed protection of environment and uh, urban design and spatial planning which has a big portion of um, environment protection as well as development of green areas and uh, um, energy efficiency as well as transportation plan and uh, um, uh, preservation of uh, natural heritage as well as uh, wild nature. Uh, so in Georgia, what municipalities usually elaborate and enforce plans for and policy documents on energy efficiency, climate change and environmental protection. Uh, those documents have a status of local uh, legal acts and they are uh, obligatory for implementation on the territory of municipalities. Um, municipalities uh, also take uh, action uh, for reduction of COE emission and energy efficiency and mostly it applies to the municipal transport and in recent years there was a huge steps made forward for renovation of uh, municipal automobile park and making it based not on fossil fuels but on compressed national uh, uh, gas as well as on electric um, motion. And municipalities work on implementation of climate change adaptation measures this is very um, important for highland municipalities, which are mostly affected by climate change. And we need uh, not only um, uh, adaptation, but mitigation measures in highland areas. And municipalities indeed promote a green economy in Georgian cities and uh, communities. Uh, that means a promotion of green tourism, agriculture, and um, some other uh, economic activities um, which have a, uh, green, uh, green aspects and environmental aspects. So as of today, 24 Georgian municipalities are signatories to the Covenant of Mayors for Climate and Energy, and 10 Georgian municipalities have already adopted a sustainable energy action plans. So while I'm preparing this uh, presentation, I wanted to present uh, three best cases from Georgia, but taking into account that I have already got 10 minutes for my presentation, I would limit uh, my presentation with one example, which is a very vivid 
case uh, how municipal how, how small municipality small municipality in uh, European sense because in Georgia municipality which has a uh, 38 inhabitants is quite big um, uh, but how the municipality which is located in a region can make a tremendous effort for uh, climate change and uh, promotion of green economy. So this is a case of Tel Aviv. The Tel Aviv is a municipality located in East Georgia in the region of Kacheti, which is known for its winemaking um, uh, actually culture and history. The area of the municipality is 1000 square kilometers. The poet has population of uh, up to 39,000 inhabitants. The main sectors of economy is viticulture, tourism, service sector, and the food industry. Uh, and climate can be char characterized as a mild one, generally warm and temperate. Municipality adopted a sustainable ex energy action plan in 2016 and Key objective of this sustainable uh, energy action plan is to reduce CO emissions and use green energy in a, in a public sector. Based on uh, sustainable energy action plan, municipality developed a pilot project, and this project was usage of biomass heating system in kindergartens of the municipality because when it comes to the energy usage, the kindergartens and preschool education system is the biggest consumer of energy because it needs energy not only for a, a household and cook, cooking purposes, but it needs energy for heating. And uh, that's a quite big uh, bill for, for the municipality. So, when the municipality developed this uh, pilot project and the project was developed in cooperation with the Center for Energy and Efficiency, they tried to identify what are uh, local resources which can be used to substitute uh, conventional energy sources, and mainly natural gas, which is uh, quite expensive in Georgia. And uh, then they discovered that there is a one resource which is not duly utilized by uh, local economy. And uh, this is a, this uh, local energy source is connected with the viticulture. And I moved the project uh, was to use a vineyard, prune, vineyard pruning for production of biomass for heating system. Uh, most probably, you who are, who are from uh, rural areas, you know that in uh, during the springtime, uh, when you take uh, care of your garden, you do a um, uh, pruning um, agri operation, removing the dominant old part of the plant, and leaving a new one who will, which will give you harvest in in autumn time. In Georgia, in vineyards, it's a big operation, and uh, there is a quite big amount of wine yard pruning left uh, after such operation. In, uh, you we have very good presentation. If we can see that picture, uh, I know that you have it uh, on the slide number six, I guess. Yeah. yeah. So, and you, you can see pictures here on, on, on slide. If, uh, I hope it is visible. So uh, not, it, not, no, it's not visible. Uh, it's just uh, frozen. Uh, uh, sorry for interrupting you, but of course, for everyone uh, in the audience, they will receive uh, all the presentations afterwards. So be secure that you can uh, see it after as well. So yeah, the last minute still for you. Sorry to interrupt. Sorry, it's pity that you, if slides, if pictures are not visible, but actually most probably there are some technical, there is some technical problem here. Um, so I will try to change slides and then it may work. So in general, vineyards occupy 6,000 hectares of territory of the municipality and they have capacity to produce a minimum 2,000 tons of vineyard pruning per, per annum. And as of before the project, as usual, the vineyard pruning was burnt on open year. 
and that create, created the additional danger to environment. And that was a quite big problem because in 2019, the government of Georgia actually uh, re adopted the new legislation. And according to this uh, legislation, um, it, it is a pre pre prohibited uh, to burn uh, agricultural products as well as vineyard or garden prunings on open air. And uh, taking uh, the advantage of this new legislation, municipality developed a new initiative and somehow started dialogue with farmers to use pruning produced in vineyards for a heating purposes. What municipality did actually using this uh, cooperation with the Center for Energy Efficiency and thanks to the grant provided by the European Union, the municipality bought um, and purchased a specific equipment for collection and processing of vineyard pruning and the final product of processing of vineyard pruning was to produce a briquettes for uh, heating purposes. Then special agreement was signed with farmers and vineyard owners. And uh, with the municipality reached agreements that the farmers and vineyard owners, they will supply pruning on a reasonable price. And that was a big uh, deal as well because it has a positive impact of local economy. Then municipality selected one pilot kindergarten because the technology was quite new and uh, first it needed to be tested duly. And that was a, one kindergarten in remote village. And they renovated kindergarten according to the energy efficiency standards. And they also uh, installed a specific heating system which works on the briquettes and uses a pyrolytic burning, burning of um, briquettes uh, to boil water. So as well as uh, this give additional uh, uh, incentive to the, to the local population actually to collect this uh, vineyard prunings and store it because now they had the opportunity to sell it instead of burning it. Uh, in open year. Municipality also organized a media campaign to make farmers aware about negative impact of burning of vineyard pruning for uh, environment as well as on the health of population. And also municipality informed farmers about opportunity to get to, to make money uh, selling this uh, agricultural material uh, to the municipal company who was in charge of processing or who is in charge of processing vineyard prunings. So what was a specific um, specific um, results of the project? The energy bill for the kindergarten where this innovative heating system was uh, installed has been reduced by 76% because now they used not natural gas for heating, but they used this biomass uh, heating system. CO emission by that particular kindergarten was reduced by 21%. The project has positive impact on environment as, as farmers uh, do not burn wine pruning anymore, but they provide, they supply it to the municipal company. The project has positive impact on income of local households as well, because now local house, households uh, get a additional income from a vineyard pruning. And now it is sold as a energy resource and not wasted. So this project was quite innovative in Georgia and it is was quite not only for Georgia, but for the European Union as well. And the project participated to the Sustainable Energy uh, Days 2020, and it won a third place in the European Union Sustainable Energy Week Award in 2020. 
The Telar municipality and this particular project from Telar municipality has so participated to the best practice program uh, organized by NALAC and it was awarded label of excellence for introduction of innovative practice in energy efficiency, green municipal services and environmental protection. So re recently municipality of uh, Telari made decision to install the same system in um, 10 more kindergartens. Altogether there are 26 kindergartens in the municipality and it will be a quite big relief not only for a local environment but it will be a quite profitable for municipalities because it it say it, it will save a quite big amount of municipal money which is paid for a natural gas as well as it will be a, it will be a quite good uh, for local economy because it will increase income of local households so we will we believe that uh, this is a good uh, practice which which can be successfully shared by other georgian municipalities and not only georgian municipalities but municipalities for instance partnership which has a possibility to use a biomass generated locally for heating purposes especially in the kindergarten sector of municipal services that was 10 minutes has already gone so uh, i would thank you david that. right and if there are some questions i would be happy to answer sorry if slideshow doesn't work because the, most probably it is internet connection uh, internet connection problem but i have sent this presentation to agita and it can be disseminated among participants we, we should believe that wine is better than internet in georgia <laughs> but <laughs> but anyway that was very inspiring uh, uh words uh, about efficiency if you mention efficiency and you say the numbers how many persons and what kind of results you achieve that's that's, that makes it uh, more transparent and, and uh, is really something to dig in. Uh, I asked for the audience and I will remind that if there are some questions, you can uh, write the questions in the chat uh, room and then the presenters could go after the presentation there and, and uh, make some answers as well so that we have a uh, kind of double flow of communication, uh, presenting and also reading and, and uh, acting there. Uh, so far, thank you, David, uh, for uh, Georgian experience. And uh, I would like to give the floor for the next presenter already. And uh, we will switch uh, a little bit uh, for a side topic now, um, let's say to bring one element in. And what if we talk about the cultural aspect in European Green Deal? which means uh, we try to combine the things, what was already from uh, Tauric uh, experience that this, this goes in all the functions of the local authorities. So I would like to invite for the next presentation, uh, Marku Markula from Finland as uh, EU convenant, convenant of uh, majors from National Ambassador uh, from Finland as a chair of the ESPO City Board and president of the Helsinki region, so that you share your uh, vision about transformation as innovation and the good governance. So as Finns would say, terve tuloa, uh, the floor is yours and we are keen to hear your message. And thank you, uh, Davides. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Professor Klepers, and uh, thank you for the invitation. And I prepared as well a couple of slides, and Akita will show them there. So I wanted to be sure so that they will be there. But let me start with so that uh, as the former president of the Committee of the Regions, I've, of course, I've visited uh, uh, especially Latvia and Lithuania so many times, but some of the other uh, uh, partner countries as well, and I've been the chair for the Corlea collaboration, so I know quite a lot what's going on, and especially I've I've seen the huge progress that you've you've done in in uh, Riga and Vilnius, but in many other places, cities there as well, and it's really good to to work with you. But I I wanted to start with this slide uh, front uh, slide, so. 
First, I wanted to link there the voluntary local review that my own city, Espo, second largest city in Finland, part of the capital region, Helsinki. So we did and delivered last summer for the United Nations. And uh, you have the link there. So we are one of the forerunner cities in implementing all those sustainable development goals. And that report, it's a 200-page document, a lot of photos and how we've engaged, how we committed uh, both ourselves, but uh, citizens, uh, universities, local industry to collaborate in reaching these goals and climate neutrality is one of the goals we uh, will be, our city will be carbon neutral already 2030, so 20 years ahead the, the most of the EU. But let's link that because the, your que challenging question uh, talked about technology uh, as an instrument. So, so then what is the question? I think the question is how to make this uh, systemic transformation. And that's why I listed there three kind of uh, systematic uh, challenges that we are facing today. They're very closely linked to technology. I've used here as well the sources of uh, VTT, the Technical Research Center of Finland. And the challenge is, so what we have there, so the carbon neutrality, how to reach that in the coming uh, decades, productivity leap. We can say that uh, we know that in every city, my city as well, and I want to say as well, how to achieve a tenfold productivity leap. Uh, from different resources. We have the knowledge resources, cultural resources, and of course, technology. And then the third of these uh, systematic challenges is the societal resilience, how to be uh, uh, speeding up, how to be ready for this uh, transformation, how to get our citizens, uh, cultural sector, others included, uh, so that we can secure society's function fiscal sustainability and well-being, of course, as well, while the demographics uh, are shifting, as we have Finland uh, with Japan, we are the f fastest uh, aging society. So you can use us as, as a forerunner, how we tackle that. And then when we link that to the technological challenges, so quantum leap, especially in technology, that's for you, the professors and the others to, to do the research. How then the new materials, what can the new materials bring to us or how we can shorten the design cycle by let's say 50% so that we can take the modern materials and recycle them, uh, circular economy is key on that. And then of course, uh, digital systems, so artificial intelligence, they are, much in active use already in our city development because digitalization needs to be embedded in all our processes. And then the seventh of these challenges, especially from technology, now it's, it's linked with the bio, biology and synthetic uh, bio, both biofuels, but food and so on, so all together. So that's our challenge. So if we link that, my next slide brings that how we are tackling those in the city uh, level. So Agita, if you take that, thank you. So one of those that uh, we in Finland uh, using the EU financing, especially the cohesion finance uh, for this uh, now finish, uh, finishing seven year program period. So uh, we took the urban part of that. So cohesion regional development funds, so social funds and so on, so and targeted altogether 100 million euros, uh, partly financed by the national government. So, with the six largest cities in Finland, so three of them are in the capital region: Helsinki, Espoo, Vanta, Turku in the west, uh, uh, Tampere more in the central, and Oulu uh, city in the northern part of Finland. So these six largest cities, we've done now a deep going collaboration. Uh, and thinking from the different uh, cultural aspects, especially how to make the mental change to happen. And now it's very challenging. Uh, I'll say a few words about the Bauhaus later on, but how that has brought that, that we need 
that not only to have a good uh, high quality buildings and infrastructure, but we need to mentality there. And that's what we reach a lot with this six city collaboration. There are a few examples on the slide, uh, slide and two, two uh, links to the what this six ICA six city collaboration has been and what are the results. So much there that uh, in all parts of Europe and globally can be used as well. And we are very happy to share those experiences. But I would say that those showed very concretely that these EU programs, including the European research area, uh, that as creating new knowledge uh, through research and innovation, that program should not be only about creating new scientific research and getting the new knowledge to innovative use, but it, it needs to be more on uh, all our citizens or ma majority of the citizens to be involved in this change process. It's the same now with the Green Deal. That should not be only about tackling climate change and achieving the UN Sustainable Development Goals. These uh, huge extensive programs, they need to be much more creating favorable conditions for, for a more profound societal transformation at the local and regional uh, level and thus achieve accelerating the positive change all around Europe. So it needs more European partnerships, law, more local collaboration. And if we take the next slide, so <clears throat> on that, so I want to integrate so that there are the instruments that we, uh, on one hand, EU as well has defined which of the SDGs, which of those 17 sustainable development goals kind of match closely to each of the EU instruments, but as well. So now this Green Deal Committee of the Region, uh, where I'm together with a few others uh, that are there as well. So we have 350 members all together, uh, Committee of the Region as really the EU instruments, uh, instrument part of the official decision making representing cities and regions. So we have uh, now created uh, not only to have the Green Deal as a general one, but Green Deal going local. And now uh, <clears throat> last uh, week, we just uh, launched the special campaign, what this Green Deal going local means. So it's bo both on this uh, political pillar, but as well communication pillar so that we can do more and then we are together with uh, those committed cities, especially the ones that are now on the governance of mayors, uh, member municipalities, member cities. So we can be really instrumental in creating uh, together the roadmaps and going local action plans. And that's much what we are using this, what we have on the right hand side is again, the symbol of this six, uh, ICA six time, six city collaboration and then Joint Research Center of the EU has provided a good guidance how to implement the SDGs, the special handbook on that, uh, a handbook or guidebook on using innovation camps that we, together, Finland and uh, the other Baltic Sea countries we have used uh, in an extensive smart specialization programs and doing that together all the time. And then there will be now the new uh, EU Horizon programs two precisely focusing on climate, one more on the adaptation, one more on the smart city development. And then the third of these missions will be more on water, including fresh water, oceans, but uh, inland waters as well. And that's very, <clears throat> very crucial, especially from the global perspective. And, and of course, then the fourth one is on the food and health and so on, and the fifth one on cancer. So these EU missions will be important, but it's not only that we have researchers on those, but we need from the local level be ready to be part of the implementation programs and on that. So we have other EU instruments, including the new European research area hubs to be established and organized on a regional basis. So all of this, uh, it, it really means that uh, uh, we need to more focus on including space, buildings and depend, build environment 
and preaching uh, and creating something unique, a mental change to encourage the bottom-up city development. The city here in my talk really means uh, not only the administration or the political decision makers, but includes citizens, industry, large and small, schools, universities, all different kinds of communities. And that is the driver city from that perspective is the driver for sustainable growth and sis systematic uh, transformation. And it, it takes into strongly the cultural dimensions of sustainability as, as well. And this, if we take the next uh, slide, so, so on, on that, so I want to link this closely to the regional innovation strategies, which are, will now in the future be more and more towards sustainability. So not only risk three, but risk four. So and there are a, f a few of those in my let's say key bullet points that from the origin already 10 years ago it was targeted to be a regional transformation towards economic growth and economic sustainability. It encourages creating these innovations and innovation platforms and on those, the role of cities is crucial together with the universities. There we come what is close to the, the both these, uh, these going local action plans, but as well with the new Bauhaus, because there is the ecosystem development, local regional innovation ecosystem, which is an ex ex excellent example of what the new Bauhaus can mean in science and bringing art and real life practice together and how the transformation can be made to happen. All uh, key actors are part of this kind of movement, Bauhaus movement, orchestrating uh, an enormous number of different projects, collaborating and measures, people operating together. And this is as well what we all EU countries should use our recovery uh, financing and the Horizon Europe programs uh, together with the cohesion funds. An example, my own city, Espo, we work very closely with the Alto University and with the VTT Technical Research Center, but uh, tens and hundreds of companies. And we are now creating this more as a kind of sustainable innovation park platform around the university campus and there close on the seashore as well. So showcasing what, how we live close to the nature, how we can implement. And that is something that definitely <clears throat> along the Baltic Sea with the other, <clears throat> the other cities and, and regions, we can do really a lot. And uh, there on the right, so these graphics, it's uh, how our Helsinki region uh, kind of uh, part of our smart specialization strategy graphics that we focus especially on climate neutrality on what does this all green and digital mean for the citizens and then how to do the uh, industrial transformation and then the activities are kind of orchestrated together and that is what we can do much more to to with the other cities and regions in, in Europe and, and in the Eastern Partnership countries as well. And if we take my final slide, um, so that kind of brings that uh, really back to this screen and what uh, the Commission President uh, Ursula von der Leyen when announcing as well the Bauhaus, she stressed heavily that all this Green Deal and Bauhaus, they are strongly linked to the a new sustainable growth strategy, how to create new jobs. And uh, there I'm showing that these six focus areas, they are part of our Helsinki region roadmap. The whole region will be carbon neutral. I'm convinced on that could be carbon neutral 2035. Several cities like Espo and Wanta or airport city will be already 2030 and we will definitely collaborate much as uh, experimenting cities, demonstrating cities, uh, uh, prototyping, testing cities uh, within these EU missions as well. But that's something that definitely Finland, the Baltic uh, states, uh, cities, 
uh, all around the Baltic Sea, so we want to do more. I have there as well a report uh, on the right-hand side. Uh, you can find that when you Google that from the Commission Publications Place-Based Innovation Ecosystem. That's the report that the Joint Research Center of the EU did uh, already analyzing our ESPO Innovation Garden, the city structure, how we collaborate with the researchers. And, and that is uh, four years ago, it was published as, as a kind of uh, uh, benchmarking or bench learning. It's learning is the key on that. So, uh, so for the others as well to, to use in their own processes. And let me just now finally conclude that in Europe, we want to encourage the mental growth to be more holistic, more collaborative, more creative, and that's the approach towards the better built environment, better infrastructure, which is the responsibility of uh, cities uh, uh, together and municipalities together with the local industry. And that uh, the, the other key message to conclude is that the most impressive forms of kind of inventing the future, they happen now on these uh, innovation focused ecosystems Typically, the, uh, they are co-created spaces forming kind of smart village type islands uh, with the, within the university and other similar campuses. So that's a challenge that we can attract young people to stay and innovate, start their own businesses, startups and so on in all parts of, of Europe. And this is a learning experience, it's experimenting experience and scaling up through what we have living labs, future centers, innovation camps and other that kind of activities where especially the young people are really the key actors and this has started to move the, the movement and this is getting the young and this uh, industrial participation so strong that has been the key instrument for us in the Helsinki region to become the most innovative region in the EU according to the recent uh, innovation EU scoreboard. So thank you very much and let's be in touch. Thank you. Uh, very impressive. Thanks a lot, Marco Markula. That, uh, that was uh, very good lessons, very well designed slides for all of us and we know very well from all the other reports, uh, Finland is running in forefront with innovation ecosystems and education collaboration with industry and uh, local uh, governments as well. Uh, I would take one note from your presentation. You mentioned that uh, project about uh, Kusi Aika, the six yeah. uh, big cities. And, and I guess this is something to bear for all of us today as well, that uh, something could be reached really in good competition because as small authorities, as, as local uh, governments, we are competing among uh, us for the resources, but you show that uh, big things could be achieved together, competing, but cooperating at the same time. And, uh, I guess that's that's a great challenge for uh, Eastern Partnership, the same as for Baltics and other participants. Thank you for your uh, message delivered and uh, taking transformation as a keyword. We go further with with that for the great transformation this time, from the book to the reality. And I would invite uh, next speaker, Roland uh, Dudal, uh, director and architect uh, from Workroom Brussels. So this is your uh, time to speak and deliver the next uh, impressive message to the audience. So the floor is yours. Thanks. I'm, I'm just wondering, do you see uh, the orange screen. rectangle or you see my whole screen? Uh, this, this is, yeah, the orange <laughs> full screen. We see. Okay, that's uh, perfect, perfect then. Thank you, uh, just to be sure. Um, thank you very much for uh, inviting me. It's a great uh, pleasure to talk for uh, so many important people uh, from the other sides of Europe, in the north or in the east. Um, I 
we represent Architecture Work from Brussels. That's a non-profit cultural innovation platform for architecture and, and urbanism that I founded uh, about 12 years ago uh, in Brussels with uh, some uh, colleague architects. Um, um, we are based in Brussels and uh, are developing a practice that is uh, combining uh, research activities with cultural productions, exhibitions and so on. And we are evolving into a societal uh, practice uh, more and more. I will explain you why. Because in um, 2018, we were asking ourselves, where are we? And um, we, of course, uh, we knew where we were in, in Brussels, but we were asking ourselves, where are we uh, from the past, in between the past and the future, in between the major challenges that we are facing and uh, the ambitious objectives that are set, uh, amongst others, by uh, the United Nations, Europe, and, 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 and national and local governments. And yes, we were there. Uh, on, on this planet that is facing a major uh, global challenges uh, when it comes to demographic growth, uh, the gap between poor and rich, uh, climate change, biodiversity, uh, many challenges uh, are facing. Uh, we were also here in Europe, the old continent that is uh, uh, putting a lot of pressure uh, on that planet, uh, using uh, double uh, the resources that it has uh, available uh, on its services. Uh, we were also in this uh, low, low, in the low countries and the delta of the of the, the river Skelt, Meuse, and 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 Rhine, and uh, an, an important uh, reality, uh, territorial reality uh, that we have to take into account to build our futures. We were in Brussels, the, the capital of Europe, the capital of Belgium, the capital of Flanders, and more specifically in the northern district uh, of, of Europe, uh, of Brussels, a monofunctional uh, business district built in the 80s and uh, after 40 years completely outdated and, and to throw away and to transform completely into uh, a new part of the city. Um, we were especially in this building, an old, uh, an old fashioned uh, office tower, uh, empty, uh, waiting in between, in the period in between uh, the old tenants and, uh, and the, the newly uh, renovation that is taking place right now. Uh, to make this building into a multi-use, uh, vibrant, uh, new part of the city. And we put this quote on the tower, the future is here, and we were asking ourselves, whose future is here, and what is the future? What kind of future is here? And if we even would know what kind of future we want, how are we going to get there? So we took the building as a stage, as a test site, and we set up a, a public parkour and exhibition uh, in, the, in the tower. And the starting point was this statement that we start to understand more and more that we have somehow a problem because we agree that we have lived at the expense of our planet and that fundamental change is urgent, as also mentioned by previous speakers. But very often we also agree that we do not change enough or not rapidly enough. So this future that is ahead of us seems for many people not to be realistic. So that's why we think we need to rethink our practice of uh, making city and, of, and of, of making society to embrace the problems and, and try to imagine uh, a possible future where we, within which we have the capacity to act. So we think that this future is possible if we turn it into a practice. And as architects, we were very interested in the contribution of design and design research and the role of the architect in, uh, and urban planners in this uh, uh, story. So uh, we collected uh, uh, innovative practices in the, in, the, in the architectural and the urban planning field. And uh, uh, many of those exist, but very often they are, they are rather fragile and, and also working in, in niche uh, of society and not uh, working together in a practice of practices. When we look at the architectural practice in, in particular, 
the architect used to give the answer to a clear question. And that's that an architecture with a big A, if you make a nice build, nice museum, a nice, a nice school building, the best possible answer for the question. And in Flanders and in Belgium and in Europe, all over Europe, we have many, many great architects who can do great things, uh, design wonderful houses. But in Flanders, it is happening in this uh, chaotic, uh, uh, messed up, uh, fragmented uh, urban uh, sprawl, which is maybe, the, this is maybe a great answer, but uh, shouldn't we rethink the question if we see these results uh, spreading out all over the place, uh, eating uh, open space and, by the, and nature in favor of uh, urban development and with a lot of mobility as a, as a result. So it, there is, of course, other positions of the architects and the designers, and this can be uh, clustered somehow in a design research practice where there is a, a municipalities or a governance uh, urban policy is asking designers to do design research and rethink from question to answer the process of what could be possible as answers and how can we design uh, both the questions and the answers and, and, and think in scenarios uh, and so on. But also this design practice is assuming stable positions as if the, there is like a client who's still mandated to define the next steps and the architect is giving an input and then the question goes back to the client and he's uh, taking the next steps and putting it in the market and, 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 and building the results. Um, this is very often not enough. Uh, because we see uh, that that a lot of things are happening in a, in a in a very dynamic field of actors of insights of technological evolutions of societal innovation of uh, expertise of uh, governance structures of different uh, uh, research knowledge and and and, and different uh, practices. So we think that we might evolve into a third uh, way of looking at the design practice not to exclude the earlier ones, but to add up and, and, and make sure that we can tackle all the challenges. And we need a practice of change, a practice that is preparing society uh, to find both uh, the right question and the right answers while doing uh, and while uh, acting in changing uh, society and uh, scaling up good things. So, we brought uh, all these practices together uh, when it is about sociological approach or participatory urban, urban renewal projects or uh, common labs or civic design, the civic science projects on, for instance, uh, uh, water quality or air quality when it comes about practices that reintroduce reuse in architecture, uh, circular building, um, the importance of water and biodiversity uh, in cities and so on. So I know that I only have 15 minutes. That's why I show a lot of images. And I think that maybe this can help you diving a little bit in the atmosphere of the story. So maybe it needs less words then. But uh, uh, I continue in the third part of that project we set up in 2018, we said just imagining the future practice is not enough. We just have to try to start doing it. So we created on the 23rd floor of that office tower an open workspace exhibition that was also a meeting space and a workspace for free for everybody, where we accumulated knowledge um, of diff on different topics, we structured an agenda and we invited uh, all kinds of uh, actors in society from uh, uh, administrators to uh, experts to people from the neighborhood uh, to discover uh, all these attempts to uh, answer the societal challenges that we are facing via spatial projects. Uh, amongst others with guided tours, workshops, um, public program of, of international conferences, debates, seminars for real estate agents, and even an educational program where we invited the children from the schools outside the building to come up into the tower and imagine themselves how they can contribute to 
uh, or they can imagine the future of their city and contribute to it with their inventiveness. Um, because yes, indeed, the future will be uh, steered by the young people. Uh, that is important. So we did actions in the tower, but also outside, creating a kind of uh, uh, dynamics of exchange and debate, uh, like uh, blocking the roundabout for a day in order to transfer an, a fountain uh, that is never used in the middle of the business district into a, a swimming pool for one day. Uh, how can we uh, imagine a, a more sustainable, more um, uh, qualitative future uh, in, in the city. So, very important for us to share with you today is that we just we do bring together a lot of knowledge, a lot of examples from other other architects, other actors uh, in the field, but we structured it in a shared agenda. So we try to structure the work. Uh, in several topics according to our research that are the topics that really uh, are important. And um, within each of the thematical rooms, uh, we were taking care of uh, showing that the answers are needed in many scales at the same time, from the scale of the house, to the park, to the region, to the world. Uh, for instance, as what you can see here when it comes to the important challenge of uh, dealing different uh, with uh, water uh, in our society. And I will give a short example of, of such a practice that we invited there. Uh, there was, uh, in, back then, uh, every Friday morning, there was a lot of parents in Brussels and other cities in Belgium that were protesting with their children in front of the school uh, uh, to, to protest against the bad air quality and the unsafe uh, uh, environments and unpleasant environments of many schools. Um, uh, they got a lot of media attention and we researched also this topic uh, together with them, uh, with an association that is uh, bringing those parents in net to network. Um, and we identified that thousands of people, thousands of children in Brussels are going to school every day in very bad uh, air conditions, which is completely unacceptable, especially when you are a parent uh, bringing uh, by foot or by bike your kids, knowing that you are uh, bringing him to a very unhealthy place. But instead of only protesting, we did a call for action. We invited those parents into our exhibition space and uh, with experts and, 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 and architects and designers um, in order to help them understanding better their own school environment and how they could not only plea for better air quality, but also come up with ideas to change the public space around their school and the mobility system around their schools in order to make sure that uh, healthy environments becomes more possible. And so there was a co-design uh, workshops uh, with many schools and we think that uh, if many, many, many schools are ready to transform their own um, environment, this will build up to the biggest uh, mobility shift plan ever. And uh, out of these experiences, we also are working with those associations now on transforming streets into climate streets and uh, trying to uh, uh, redistribute public space uh, so active users, uh, cyclists and walkers are uh, privileged in a green and pleasant environment. Uh, so the modal shift would really take place and, and air quality would increase. Um, in this kind of uh, places. And this is now had a, an enormous impact on politicians at the, re at the local uh, elections. And many, many, many municipalities are now introducing school streets, trying to make schools more healthy and more safe for the children uh, using it every day. And that is just one example of how we can uh, bring uh, from the field building new practices on the field 
and bringing, accelerating and multiplicating good practices uh, to reach our ambitious goals. Um, so, to finish up, uh, we are now, today, in a couple of days, we are launching the Great Transformation. The Great Transformation, actually, we are going to do somehow exactly the same what we could do during the architectural exhibition in, in 2018, but we try to do it on a continuous base now, as a societal movement, as a societal practice, and not only as an, an exception uh, within a certain period of an exhibition uh, venue. And um, the Great Transformation will do all the things you just saw, but uh, in actual conditions, both online and physical. So we are going to set up as well um, uh, live streams as uh, workshops in neighborhoods. We are going to have, uh, we, we, we make videos uh, to share on the on online platform, uh, as well as we are going to do walks and cycle tours with people uh, on the field. And the main idea of the Great Transformation is that we know that every period uh, in, in history has typical projects. For instance, in Belgium, it was the environments of railway stations and residential expansion areas recently. But what are the places of change for the future that we will have to realize in large numbers for the coming period uh, in order to achieve our societal objectives? And the Great Transformation is thus a cultural project, but also an online environment and an incubator for projects uh, via the, that online uh, environment. Um, on that environment, we are going to develop, um, again, a structured agenda of future places. And within each of that uh, workspace for those future places, knowledge will be shared, live streams and webinars will be shared, uh, good examples will be uh, piled up, uh, and we will try to steer people towards a, a community of practices in order to uh, build uh, the future of our cities via those future places. And uh, um, amongst others, food parks. So how can we organize a new interplay between land position and land use to create more space for healthy, uh, profitable and affordable food production? Or uh, learning, uh, 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 learning environments. Uh, I apologize, there's still few words in Dutch but it's about making and learning places. Where should we build the workplaces that bring innovation and production closer to the community to provide educational and retraining opportunities for the makers and entrepreneurs of tomorrow? It's about climate streets. How can we design our streets at living spaces where we simultaneously address cooling, water infiltration, social cohesion and safe and healthy mobility? It's about careful neighborhoods how do we organize our neighborhoods as cornerstones of our care systems? Not to push people in need for care and all people outside the city in institutions, but let them uh, be taken care of and let them live longer in their own neighborhoods so they can, so care can be, become a societal uh, um, action again and not something uh, institu institutionalized or energy neighborhoods. How do we finance the renovation of our districts for each household, household so they not only consume less energy but generate, store and share more energy themselves in an affordable uh, way. So this is the kind of challenges that we want to tackle by uh, making a cultural independent online uh, framework uh, where uh, a lot of interesting um, uh, thoughts and, and, and knowledge can be uh, shared uh, with those who want to build uh, on the same uh, in the same in the in the same direction. So we know that all these changes will land in our everyday environment. So how can we ensure that this leads to a quality leap? And how do we get everyone on board with this story? So this is our recommendation uh, for the Green Deal and the new European Bauhaus is that they continue supporting uh, this kind of settings where people meet each other, where they can learn from each other, 
but where the art crew can develop new practices, new ways of working, new financial models in order to be ready to scale up, accumulate, multiply uh, uh, good, good, good projects, uh, such as uh, 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 to, to realize in the end a lot of this and a lot of this and even more of this and uh, thank you for your attention. Thanks a lot, Ryland. Uh, that was great uh, impulse for a lot of uh, participants today, almost 80 uh, at the moment in the platform and just as from the planners and politicians side, we should say thank you for the architects about this design thinking and probably one message you brought that uh, the, the value of the architectural thinking and this design framework is that it stays non-fragmented. Everything should run smoothly and uh, this is what we sometimes see in our, uh, uh, let's say, the past uh, planning processes that not everything is uh, like, like that from this design approach. I, I like you mentioned this participatory approach alive. It's not just as idea, but really you have this space, but what to do uh, with it and how to come to the real results and that, that was a good showcase. I, I think this is something to learn uh, for all the local authorities as well for the nearest future that this participation of the local communities and the local leaders, they, they really have those futures and visions and we should listen carefully. But uh, of course, here the erudition and prof professionality should come in, how to sort out what could <laughs> be uh, valuable and what is uh, just uh, nice creativity. And uh, this, this is very big responsibility. Thanks a lot for your presentation. And we are balancing uh, between great, great content and timing what speeds us up uh, to, to the next presenter. And uh, if some questions appear, please stay some minutes still to see if uh, there is something to answer in chat. Otherwise, thank you around once again. And uh, I will uh, introduce with the next speaker, which is the expert of innovation and tourism from Kuldiga municipality. Uh, so the example will come from uh, Latvia. And uh, Artis Gustauskis um, is the one who will speak about uh, Bauhaus ideas uh, implemented in the municipality of Kuldiga. Artist, the floor you. is yours if you are ready to deliver Thank your you, message. Andres. Thank you, dear ladies and gentlemen. My name is Artis, as Andres said, and please start with a short, short video. Thank you, thank you. I will share my screen and do my best to <laughs> make my presentation as short as possible. Well, um, uh, so uh, let's speak about our street art festival. What is a street art festival? Well, my first background is art pedagogy and I had an idea to create this festival because Kuldiga is a small uh, town in western part of Latvia, written in the national list of UNESCO, and we have a strong restrictions about the develop development of this um, old town. 
therefore, the problem was um, uh, that old suburbs are so-called uh, new town. Uh, they are a bit ugly and it's uh, making a big contrast with uh, this UNESCO old town. And you know, every city has some old suburbs or so. Therefore, our idea was to change it uh, with an art and with paintings on the walls and its so-called murals. So here in presentation, you see uh, the two pictures um, before and now, and this is just a, a wall of one house and one building. Uh, but last year we succeeded attract eight artists from three countries and we made seven such murals. Uh, about seven to three was the smallest one and the others um, are a bit bigger ones. Um, well, um, about artists, um, every festival depends from the artists. We made a competition and um, it was a very nice international artist organization, which is called Artviller. You can find their homepage and it's combination of um, traveler and artist. So they are artists free of charge without honorariums and they coming to the uh, places uh, which are making street art like we did. So, and uh, we um, have got about 42 applications from about 20 country states um, from artists and 12 were accepted, uh, but because of COVID-19, you know, last year, 2020, uh, unfortunately, finally, there came just two of them, Clara Cabrera from Spain and Pavel Hafizo. But we understood that this kind of event, uh, street art, mural festival, is a COVID-friendly event because <laughs> artist is painting a wall one-to-one. -one. Nobody uh, is there. And if the visitor is coming to watch it, they are in, um, watching it from a distance and in open air. So it's a COVID friendly event. Uh, workshops, we succeeded to make also um, uh, workshops. Last year we made it for um, young people, school children, students and so. And uh, of course there were kind of um, master classes, uh, graffiti, um, we had free graffiti artists and, you know, it was a great interest um, also from seniors, not only uh, small kids and children from schools. Second was painting classes, then drone classes and even video classes, how to build your own video, uh, including this festival. So uh, also this video you saw was made with strong cooperation with Ms. Agita Kaupuja uh, from Latvian Association of Local and Regional Governments. So this was really nice that we made those kind of workshops to in involve all possible partners, but not, not all, not all. So let's go ahead. Green event. Um, Yes, um, we have learned a lot from our previous projects uh, together with Green Film Shooting Organization in Germany about green criteria for events. Uh, they using this for film shooting events and so on, but they made kind of a green film shooting ABC, uh, how to make it green and how to make every event green. And we made within our festival, so-called um, the ABC handbook of the green criteria for our green festival. Um, what kind of criteria? For example, um, ecological paints, electro cars, getting artists to the sites and transport for lunch, um, recyclable dishes, uh, nature friendly, different other things. Or for example, vegetarian meals. So finally, um, we started to create this um, kind of um, green um, festival with all kind of, as possible green uh, criteria for um, all kinds of green events. Let's go further. Uh, Bauhaus, 
if you ask me, I uh, call it all for one or one for all. <laughs> you know, the old nice uh, slogan or song even or so. Why? Because um, uh, this festival involves all kinds of people from um, our town. It's in involving uh, youngsters, adults, seniors, art school, local artists, municipality workers and citizens. And for example, we love that um, last year, um, even some private people coming um, to festival and asking, oh, is it possible to paint also my private wall from my private house? And I say, yes, sure, of course. Just if you cover the paints, and if you cover some other um, expenses for the artist, then everything is possible. So, and here you see some pictures that we involved a lot of um, youngsters, a lot of other um, city um, inhabitants. But um, what we are going to do in future, it is that we willing to do it also like a digital festival. Uh, with research areas um, and so on, like to be a smart city, like um, Professor Mr. Markula spoke about. And finally, our aim is um, all the new part of the town to be simple, like an open art gallery, because um, if every year seven or 10 murals or houses will be painted, so you imagine every year it will becoming like an open art gallery. So, and it's also uniting the local inhabitants and people. That was all I wish you to say. So I do believe that the art will save the world. <laughs> Thank you so much. And if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask it. Artis, thanks a lot. Uh, that was uh, fast and beautiful. <laughs> As, uh, yeah, it's easy going idea and, and people definitely, uh, they, they got it. Uh, what, what is your comment about the construction board? Because sometimes, you know, in the local authority, those are the people who really think about all the regulations. And, and if you mention the cultural heritage side, there is really uh, very yes. carefully uh, how to you design the public yes. space. Yes. Uh, any yeah. comment yeah. on that? It's a very good question because especially I mentioned to you that our old town is um, in the national list of UNESCO. Therefore, we have strongly, uh, strongly um, restrictions that we do not paint anything in the old town. Old town is a silent place. We do not do anything there, but we doing everything on a new town and also to be clear, uh, every year when we are uh, preparing the walls uh, which will be painted, we preparing this list and getting to accept it by a building board of local municipality. And they coming and visiting every single um, house, every single wall which will be painted and making their accept accepted. So exception is important and we do it. So it's in the following way. Yeah. So Thank yeah, so that's much. not a total improvisation. It's uh, still no. uh, well managed. Yes. Uh, that's, yes. that's good. Thank you, artists. I, I guess, uh, yeah, if there will be some questions still in the chat uh, stream, you, you can follow for the next minutes. Otherwise, uh, thanks a lot for uh, sharing the ideas. And I should say that uh, we moved to the uh, let's say a very important uh, part where we will have some exchanges of views from our uh, common uh, Eastern Partnership Corporation about the priorities and preferences and uh, looking towards the ways of the future. And there will be uh, four speakers right now. Uh, and every of the speaker will have five minutes uh, for their speech. So. I would like to invite, first of all, uh, Mr. Yevgeny Kroza as a regional pro project manager uh, from UNDP. And that, that is the first of uh, this kind of uh, chapter for our speeches. So the floor is yours. 
Uh, good afternoon, dear colleagues. I'm honored to, to be here and I'll try to be quick with uh, presenting the climate activities uh, that we are doing in the Eastern Partnership countries. Uh, so um, I will be talking about uh, the work of uh, EU for Climate. Uh, this is a, a project uh, financed by the EU and implemented by UNDP. Second, yeah. Uh, so uh, we have started our work in 2019 and it's a four year project until 2022. Uh, we work in all six uh, Eastern partnership countries. Uh, and uh, the main goal is to work on the national level policies and help the countries with uh, uh, developing uh, their uh, national policies such as uh, NDCs to Paris agreements so uh, to, to fulfill the obligation under the UNFCCC and uh, also the um, uh, adaptation plans, uh, improving the monitoring systems for emissions, uh, etc. Uh, so uh, here you would see the uh, the list of uh, the results that we expect. I, I won't be going through all of them. Maybe just we'll stop quickly that recently uh, we have finalized the NDC of Armenia. And again, I'm very uh, proud that uh, we had the chance to work uh, with uh, the country and help to formulate the commitments until 2030. Uh, also, we um, uh, hope to have uh, the NDC of Belarus finalized soon and also released to UNFCCC. You, you will see it within a couple of months, hopefully. Uh, and among other major things, we, we are working on four long-term uh, emissions developments, uh, long-term low emission development strategies uh, and uh, the national adaptation strategy for Ukraine. Uh, so also here you, you see the typical list of the activities we are doing. So our project is... Uh, very intensive in terms of uh, trainings and workshops, interactive events. So I'd like to use this opportunity to uh, invite you to participate. Uh, I think we're uh, very grateful for uh, Covenant of Mayors to already contribute to several of our past events and just to remind colleagues that you are very welcome to join. Uh, and to tell you uh, about a uh, few cases, how we cooperate with municipalities. So once again, we are focused on the national scale policies, but of course, uh, after those policies are developed, uh, the implementation uh, will be uh, particularly important on the municipal level because municipalities are the key source of uh, greenhouse gas emissions, but also municipalities are most vulnerable to, to the effects of climate change. So uh, in uh, Ukraine, we've been uh, helping for already about half a year with developing the country's uh, national adaptation strategy. Uh, this is a top priority document and um, there was a presidential decree uh, establishing the, the need to develop the adaptation strategy. Uh, since the beginning of work, we involved very actively uh, municipal actors and um, Covenant of Mayors is, is uh, participating in all of the meetings of the working group that uh, was meeting almost 10 times throughout the, the whole process. Uh, right now, we have the draft adaptation strategy developed and it is being reviewed by the government and it uh, describes uh, most of the aspects needed to address the adaptation issues such as risks and vulnerabilities cross-sectoral uh, issues, etc. Uh, so um, once this is approved by the government, again, I, I think you, uh, this is important that uh, municipality take, municipalities take the ownership and uh, both uh, work on, uh, in implementing this uh, strategy and also to develop their own approaches how to adapt to climate change. Um, I also wanted to mention that uh, on specific requests uh, by uh, Eastern Partnership countries, we uh, did uh, an adaptation workshop earlier this year in March, uh, specifically focused on the municipal aspects of adaptation. 
if you are interested, you can go to our website and, and check the presentations and also recordings for the for the key sessions from from that event. Uh, and um, also, we are looking forward to work with uh, Belarus, uh, hopefully to assist the country with uh, developing the uh, national adaptation plans. Uh, so uh, with this, I, I want uh, once again to thank the representatives of municipalities and the covenant of mayors to for, for working actively with us and uh, invite you to participate in our future work and events. So thank you very much. Andres, you are muted. Yes, uh, no, it's it's fine. Thanks a lot for uh, uh, being precise and uh, we got this overall message and, and what is uh, really important that uh, this goes global and we try to get it local for the uh, local use and, and with the help of local authorities uh, that that should be <laughs> executed. I, I think you will uh, join still for the final remarks if uh, something appears, uh, let's say in the improvised uh, five minute discussion after your uh, four people block uh, uh, after this uh, uh, yeah, short presentation uh, uh, event. And uh, yeah, then, then probably there will be some questions still from the audience. Otherwise, I would like to ask the next speaker, uh, Mrs. Irina Yarmulenko, uh, as a, a Pan-European Platforma spokespeaker uh, and Council of uh, City of Bucha uh, from Ukraine. And our Latvian uh, members will definitely agree that's a nice uh, name of uh, city in Latvian. But uh, the floor is yours. So if you are ready to deliver the message, please. Uh, good, good afternoon for everyone. Thank you for the invitation. I would share a bit about our activities of uh, my native city, Zitomir. Uh, I had been working as a city council member for five years, and now I'm close to Kiev as a city council member. It's more smaller city, but uh, we are also working in this area. Uh, my presentation uh, is on uh, Ukrainian and partly English language, uh, and I would like to continue on Russia. I hope it's okay. It's no problem because it's working language. Uh, let's say that. Давайте скажем uh, правду, что действительно много есть у нас законодательства, которое позволяет нам работать в сфере э, климата, в сфере экологии и, 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 и других касающихся этого сфер. Но э, на местах в то же время есть только частичное понимание, что климатические изменения – это важно, это касается каждого из нас. Это не о каких-то глобальных слоганах, о которых говорят большие люди, типа президентов и министров. Это понимание, когда ты поднимаешь эту тему, особенно когда ты депутат городского совета и говоришь про климат, говорят, с какого ты космоса приезжаешь. И вот вот этом как бы есть проблема. Я считаю, что в Украине, чтобы вопрос стал для местных властей актуальным, должна быть национальная воля. И э, это то, эта тема должна стать уровня государственной важности, как это случилось, например, в Европейском Союзе, который огласил чрезвычайную ситуацию, как это начал говорить новый президент США о том, что это важная тема. Точно так я не слышу от нашего президента информации про то, что это важно. В то же время мы видим рисунок, что, как рисуют дети, как они уже видят этот мир, когда мы говорим об этом. Это одно из наших Одно из наших конкурсов, которые мы проявляли как местные органы местного управления, я как депутат, как гражданский деятель. И вот если посмотреть дальше, мы видим, что есть в городах проблематика, которая она присутствует в каждом городе. То есть температура поднимается в городах, долго нет дождей, мы постоянно об этом. Когда дожди выпадают, канализации просто взрываются. А отключение воды, высыхание, у нас было в родном моем городе Житомире, высыхание речки, ну и опять же новые бактерии, то есть это реальные проблемы. Мы видим структуру, что сколько выбросов происходит в энергетике, 35% сети государства, то есть там, животоводство это 
промышленность 21, транспорт 14 и сектор жилья это 6%. Мы видим, что произошло в прошлом году, когда климатические изменения происходили. Мы видим, что это было и в Украине у нас был смерть, что было в Греции, какие шторма были как это проявлялось. Мы понимаем, что социальные группы будут более всего не готовы, люди без денег, люди с проблемами здоровья и так далее. И это еще следующий вопрос, который будет стоять перед городами, перед местными властями. А на самом деле, есть у нас, я хочу сказать, что из-за того, что в государственной войне огромнейшей сильной политики, у нас также и на местах есть много проектов решений, их реально очень много. Есть разные мероприятия, в то же время вот даже Government of Mayor, она тоже есть, и у нас в Житомире она очень, спасибо огромное, классно работает, происходит классная документальная, там, adaptation, mitigation вот, по климату, мы проводим разные исследования и так далее, чего нету, например, в меньших городах, и это я считаю, опять же, проблемой. Поэтому я считаю, что решения на местных властях не систематизированы и не происходят вот точно, особенно часто за инициативу каких-то очень таких uh, passion people. Вот я себя отношу к passion, я вынесла решение uh, о пластиковых пакетах в городе, чтобы меньше их использовать, но это осталось на уровне решения. Национальное законодательство провалило этот законопроект. Uh, мы проводили с ассоциацией городов Climate Ambition Forum, и мы при, при, приглашали представителя CC35, это uh, Capital for the Climate, uh, America City for the Climate. И вот мы подписали меморандум про сотрудничество. Это опять же про кооперацию, про наши возможные будущие проекты, и, про, и, и подальше надо говорить, подписать следующие шаги. То есть я считаю, что их практики очень для нас могут быть интересны, и я была бы рада, если бы мы дальше это вместе э, делали с э, восточным европейским партнерством. Также вы, вы можете увидеть, что проводились разные мероприятия, которые на местном уровне, я же говорю, это там уборка чего-то, не совсем мелкие, но они проводятся. А, что бы э, хотелось э, предложить, да, городам хотелось бы предложить обратить внимание на SDG, и все свои решения проводить через призму этих SDG. Также мы опросили людей, вот я не буду показывать видео, и показалось, что люди на самом деле адекватно реагируют на то, что нужно это делать, что климат это актуально, и они понимают, то есть люди готовы, а власти, на мое мнение, они боятся, что про них скажут, ну сейчас не время, сейчас ковид, сейчас экономика падает, сейчас социальные проблемы, какой климат. Но на самом деле по моим опросам, видео опросам, таким кустарным, люди готовы. Вот мы видим, как это делается в Climate Action Plan для Бостона, вот как города объединяют American Cities Climate Challenges. То есть много примеров, которые можно брать, которые можно обсуждать на common events, делать э, common action plan, который потом э, под каждый город, и вот эти инструменты адаптировать. Главное, на мое убеждение, это политическая воля. Как, гор, э, как мэра, и есть мэры готовы и более прогрессивны, э, а есть мэры, которые еще не готовы. И вот наша задача максимально прокачать мэров, максимально потом от мэров, если потому что э, э, think global, do local. Вот. Так и здесь. Вот прокачать сначала вот хотя бы местные власти, местных депутатов, которые направят все четкое движение, национальная власть, мы так точно уже готовы. Давайте от вас какие-то настоящие законопроекты в этой сфере. У меня еще есть пару типсов, но я думаю, на следующий раз обязательно поделюсь, чтобы я вложилась время. Всем хорошего дня, спасибо. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Irina, uh, thanks a lot for sharing uh, such a, uh, let's say, such a visual content in uh, so short time, and that definitely was good for perception. And uh, after your speech and uh, what already Jevgen Kroza has started uh, about this uh, bridging the EU Green Deal and Eastern Partnership. This is rather important that, of course, we see the uh, impact from the climate change, but uh, what uh, are the real actions and how to synchronize in, in that big area, not only EU, but uh, also in the Eastern part. 
Uh, let's go to the next presenter. Thank you so much. And uh, Octavi Ivano, as coordinator and expert in energy efficiency from Moldova, will continue with, uh, uh, yeah, with the next uh, message. If you are ready, uh, floor is yours. Sorry, uh, my name is Alexandro Osac. Actually, I'm in uh, Octavi Ivanovstad, uh, who is uh, know. making this uh, short allocation uh, Welcome. on behalf of our association. Uh, I would like to focus uh, particularly on the systemic issues referring to the cooperation between the uh, European Union Eastern Partnership and, of course, in line with the priorities of the green economy, of uh, climate change, which we are discussed today, and would like to stop uh, particularly on three issues of uh, the uh, priority important for us at least, but I think for many countries uh, throughout Europe, it's uh, investments for, for all these uh, good activities and the targets. It's support for local government associations and it's a dialogue between local government associations and uh, uh, the European Union delegation, delegations in our countries. Uh, to recollect that, of course, we are not starting from the scratch. Uh, everything, uh, many things were uh, put in place. Uh, many things uh, finalized with successes. There were some, uh, let's say, uh, smaller success stories, bigger success stories, sometimes failures. But we definitely should analyze the experience and uh, build on that, not just on the new priorities. And uh, in this line, I would like to mention that, of course, for us, investments uh, in infrastructure is a priority number one. Uh, investments uh, are not just uh, are needed for, um, for something uh, which we conventionally understand under the scope of investments, but now it's really a mean of survival after the pandemic and our country is uh, experiencing uh, extreme influence of the pandemic situation. Moreover, it will be for years and years probably with us, this influence. And the question now is not just to have some new infrastructure, but to maintain at least what we have, not to allow for this infrastructure to de deteriorate. And because of that, of course, investments are acquiring much bigger importance, not even speaking that uh, investments normally are much more capacity building element for local governments than any trainings which are too many, but uh, which uh, the uh, local governments do not really, um, let's say, perceive uh, nicely lately because there, again, there, are, there is an exaggeration and they um, sometimes too theoretical. Uh, I would also mention that uh, investments we favor, for example, and we would very much, uh, uh, we would very much uh, uh, ask or, solicit from the European Commission to have much uh, bigger or much bigger number of the smaller projects, not only the big scale projects of 1 million or even of 500,000 euro, which for us is too much. And uh, instead of 1 million project for one municipality in five years, we can do very many projects for, uh, let's say even 30, 40,000 euro can do extraordinary things with this amount of money moreover for small municipalities and uh, reach uh, out to the much bigger number of the population. Uh, of course, uh, the, the scale of investments uh, better to increase as much as possible, better to consolidate because frankly speaking now it's a drop in the ocean comparatively with the needs, uh, funds coming are extremely small. Uh, we are very happy that commission changed the accents in Moldova at least and uh, do not uh, venture anymore with budget support, less of technical assistance, the modalities which in our opinion are not working at all anymore. And uh, very happy that commission uh, took the accent or took putting the focus on exactly on the investments. Also facilitation of private investments is extremely important in this sense. Another point I would like to stress uh, also very quickly is uh, development programs uh, in our opinion is uh, much better to focus on the uh, on the national priorities rather than on the EU priorities. EU priorities is fine, it might serve as a, a reference point to an extent, but uh, in our environment, when there are no money, even sometimes for current expenditures to talk about technology of 22nd century or about uh, 
I don't know, green or climate change or green economy that simply wouldn't be understood. And we have to certainly adjust uh, all these nice and noble intentions to the realities and to understanding of our people. For example, I would even bring here because uh, we had this extreme case of uh, when uh, European Union delegations were uh, delegation for already six or seven years were pushing for administrative territorial reforms when the entire country is against this reform. Uh, central government, uh, civil society, local governments, population, you name it. Uh, it's a generally absolutely unacceptable approach. Uh, they even uh, twisted some arms and they uh, managed to have some successes on this uh, way. But this is not the way how we should uh, make our development programs for sure. And uh, in that sense, I think the dialogue between local governments, associations and EU delegations is essential. And the uh, EU delegation and regular dialogue, we are happy that now Commission appro approved these instructions for EU delegations about involving uh, local governments, associations in discussion of the programming priorities. But the dialogue throughout the entire project and programs and projects implementation stages is also essential, first of all, to better understand for delegations the realities in the countries, because they sometimes talk only to the people in the government who have absolutely different, uh, let's say, understandings, if not, not to say motivations for explanation of the reality. And last point I would mention uh, that uh, aid modalities, never I'm tired of saying this, essential, first essential thing is aid modalities. It's not sectors, not domains, not dimensions. Aid modalities, what is not working? Uh, budget support, I said already, technical assistance, knowledge transfer, this is already uh, doing a little, very, very little effect. Uh, it's, we have, uh, this knowledge is too much for our primitive uh, circumstances and environment. And we need uh, much more sophisticated aid modalities, such as I mentioned, first of all, investments, which correspond much better to our realities and to, to our needs. And also, I think that uh, support for local governments associations is essential to think for the Commission, because uh, uh, there is now a good turnout uh, and good uh, a turning point, uh, thanks to our efforts with uh, our good European partners, Platforma, Council of Europe, in terms of uh, support for local governments, and this is going pretty well. Uh, but uh, local governments associations like ours, um, they do not receive any funding or they are not eligible or they are not uh, absolutely outside of the scope of the European Commission. While these associations uh, in the for uh, forefront of the uh, support and promotion of the European value of local democracy and local autonomy coming from the European Charter. We talk a lot about values uh, and uh, these values are very good, but some of them are so excessively promoted that uh, people are already getting some reluctance. But such an important value as uh, local democracy, as democracy as such, is almost not addressed at all by the Commission and by other international partners. In the best case, there is a political interference on behalf of the democratic issues, and that's fine, we very much appreciate them, but there is a long time already need, uh, standing need to address also uh, this with more systemic and fundamental project-based or program-based initiatives. Thank you very much, I hope I didn't overdo on the timing. Thank you. Thanks a lot, and uh, especially for uh, some critical remarks as well, because that's that's always needed to make things uh, move forward. And uh, uh, thank you for uh, being. Those are not critical; they are only explanatory. Explanatory, so but, 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 but let's say with Sorry. feet on ground and realistic, because that's that's obvious. It's needed. And thanks for uh, being in charge of uh, Octavi. So that's that's of course. Uh, good team to uh, to be presented and uh, I would like to invite the fourth presenter and uh, Nino Rukadze uh, platform uh, spokesperson as well from uh, uh, Tbilisi City Council from Georgia will uh, finalize uh, this panel and uh, if someone from previous uh, spokespersons from uh, 
from those four, uh, three, let's say, uh, if you have something to add afterwards, because this is like the, the view from the Eastern Partnership perspective, then you can add afterwards uh, still a few comments or, or sentence before the closing remarks. So Nino, if you are ready, then uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, let me extend my um, gratitude to the organizers of this event for inviting me to join this panel. And I would like to say special thanks to our Lithuanian and Latvian colleagues for the leadership uh, which they rendered to the Eastern Partnership. We highly appreciate your engagement and thank you, Professor Kleppers, for your moderation. So um, I will try to be as fast as I can. Um, so uh, first of all, I would like to provide you with some uh, context. Uh, and uh, the biggest problem that we face in Tbilisi uh, with regards to the environment is the problem of air pollution. And the source of the highest increase of carbon dioxide emissions in our case are um, uh, the privately owned vehicles. Uh, and uh, to address this problem, uh, our strategy is to promote uh, more sustainable modes of transportation, including uh, electric cars. For that purpose, we try to create as much comfort as we can uh, to owners of uh, uh, electric uh, um, vehicles. So we have uh, stationed uh, dozens of uh, electric chargers across the city, and we plan to triple this number in the years to come. By the way, when we uh, select the locations for the electric chargers, we uh, take into account the wishes and desires of owners of electric uh, um, uh, ve vehicles. They can lodge an application with the Tbilisi City um, uh, Hall and uh, they can request uh, um, stationing of uh, electric chargers at the places of uh, their convenience and we do take their preferences and requests into account. Um, uh, in, uh, we also provide some financial perks to owners of uh, electric vehicles. Uh, for instance, they don't pay um, uh, parking fees. In addition to uh, encouraging the ownership of electric vehicles, we also try to um, make our public transportation more uh, uh, sustainable. Uh, and uh, the first step, our first step in this direction was the total renewal of the public bus uh, fleet of uh, Tbilisi uh, with the aid of uh, the EBRD. Uh, and uh, all the old buses of Tbilisi have been um, replaced by new, more eco-friendly buses. And the next step uh, would be, we hope, we aspire to make uh, the replenishment, uh, the future replenishment of public buses with uh, electric buses. But uh, this aspiration can be uh, brought to life uh, only with, in case if, uh, if relevant uh, financial uh, resources uh, will be available. So um, uh, I would like to add to that that uh, this month in May, we are closing the deal for purchasing the uh, so-called smart traffic lights. Uh, in, uh, this, in September uh, of this year, uh, all the made road junctions uh, in Tbilisi will be equipped with the smart traffic lights. And as you know, these smart traffic lights, they do not only help to manage the traffic, but they also help to control the vehicle emissions. Uh, they substantially reduce the time which cars uh, spend idling at uh, light stops and um, tra traveling across the city. Uh, and again, in the future, we hope that uh, in the years to come, we, we will be able to upgrade these smart uh, traffic lights so that they can control the uh, levels of emission. And depending on these levels of the emission, we hope that uh, we will be able to, to uh, control the, uh, to make the relevant um, changes and adjustments in the uh, traffic in the real time. And um, um, 
so well to wrap up I, i'm really trying to be very uh quick uh, uh i would like to say well echoing with the uh main question which uh, you have posed uh whether the technology is an answer so definitely yes technology new technologies uh our answers to this the, to the acute problems that we face in terms of environments and they really provide uh, very effective uh, tools and instruments for uh, um, pr protecting the environment and for adjusting to climate change and to uh, mitigating the climate change effects of climate change uh, and uh, uh, I think that it is very important for us, for the local authorities to, uh, since the uh, technologies they develop there at very rapid uh, pa pace, I think it is very important for us, for the local authorities to uh, cooperate more intensively in this field uh, and to exchange the knowledge, to exchange uh, experience um, about uh, the new technologies which we use in our daily operations and which we find very helpful and effective for tackling the problems that we, that are of, uh, the, the problems that are of mutual concern and interest for us, the local uh, authorities. And I think that it is uh, equally important to admit that uh, new technologies are very expensive and uh, though they are very uh, cost effective, but uh, still they are very expensive. And oftentimes uh, when we have to make a choice between uh, more, um, more cost effective, but more expensive uh, options and maybe less effective, but less expensive options, unfortunately, we oftentimes we make uh, the decision in favor of uh, the latter. Uh, and um, I think that is uh, very important for, um, well, in other words, what I'm trying to say is that uh, in order to uh, introduce uh, more actively new technologies in the realm of activities of local municipalities, uh, substantial financial backing of donor organizations is required. And I think that uh, introduction of new technologies should be one of the top priorities uh, of cooperation between the, municipalis the municipalities and the donors. So basically uh, that's it. Well, I, I really tried to be very fast uh, because, well, to save the time. Yes, Nino, but uh, thanks for bringing us back to the initial question <laughs> so about the technologies. And I was right in time to uh, give that, that kind of opinion because that's, that's rather important. Uh, af after those uh, four speakers uh, from Yevgeny Groza and Irina Yarmolenko, and uh, we had uh, Alexandro Sadzi and now from Nina Rukadze, do you have... Uh, any comments on uh, those priorities from the Eastern Partnership side? Something to mention here or maybe to write in chat because that was short but important. Uh, I mean, uh, time is running, but, but still, if there are something to mention, either you can uh, make one uh, quick uh, reply, raising the hand or uh, uh, switching on the microphone or probably writing in the chat that uh, from your perspective, from your region or your uh, country, from this Eastern Partnership perspective, this seems to be important issue or the priority. So if there is nothing to say uh, in microphone, so you can use in chat, but uh, otherwise, uh, thanks a lot for all the presenters uh, once again. And um, I will give the floor for uh, closing remarks of uh, today's event for uh, Mrs. Vaida Aleknavichiane uh, from uh, Platforma as well uh, as a spokesperson. So uh, you can uh, make the summary of today's discussion. We raised a lot of important questions, not only one, and probably gave a lot of inspiration, but as a vice major from Yuanishki district from Lithuania, uh, you definitely have uh, to summarize those most important key points and give us uh, some, some other uh, good advice at the end of this event. Vaida, uh, the floor is yours. 
Okay, thank you. Good afternoon to everyone, or even it's almost evening, but still till five o'clock, we can say it's uh, afternoon. And uh, as a platform, a spokesperson, and as a vice mayor of Yoronishkis District Municipality from Lithuania, I am happy to share closing words of the meeting today. And I would like to say thank you all for to all the participants for the very rich and inspiring speeches, interesting presentations and uh, fruitful discussions. And special thanks to the organizers, Latvian Association of Local and Regional Governments and the Lithuanian Association of Local uh, Authorities in Lithuania, and also Platforma for the series of Eastern partnership events uh, that are holding regularly on different topics and in order to advance uh, European Union and Eastern partnership relations on local and regional governments uh, level and to show local regional government significant contribution in the multi-level dialogue as we have today. So today we addressed uh, the key topic of uh, adaptation and of uh, building climate resilience at local and regional levels in a wider Europe, including Easter partnership. As you know, um, Platforma is a coalition of local and regional governments uh, and um, national European global associations active in development cooperation. Therefore, Platforma within its uh, partners welcomes uh, the opportunity to contribute to the climate debate at uh, European Union level. And uh, in this occasion, within the context of the new European Union strategy on adaptation to climate change adopted last uh, February. As a local elected representative, I can say that um, local and uh, regional governments are suffering the consequences and the impacts of climate change and they can provide some of the solutions if uh, capacitated to do so in cooperation with the European Union and the national governments. Uh, local regional governments are ready to engage uh, on adaptation to climate change, not only at the local, but uh, also internationally and especially towards Eastern partnership countries to contribute to um, implementing the Paris uh, Agreement. As we have seen today, local regional governments are already active on local uh, adaptation measures in several sectors and the local regional governments need uh, an integrated cost-effective territorial approach with uh, adaptation and mitigation hand in hand. Today, we wanted to question the role of uh, cities and regions in building resilience at local and regional levels and uh, envisage more concretely their potential contribution to the European Union programming for 2021 and 2027. The new Global Europe instrument will dedicate 30% of its funds uh, to activities related to fighting the effects of climate change and we are also eager to know more. Uh, local regional governments um, need a supportive framework with uh, financial support, uh, enabling conditions, drivers, policies, and better knowledge base for a new and efficient strategy on uh, adaptation, which considers the different conditions and approaches in different countries. And decentralized cooperation is an important tool to, to contribute to refine, uh, design, and um, implement greener policies that would support the climate uh, neutrality goals. And uh, local regional uh, governments are already integrating green infrastructure and nature-based solutions into their urban planning, including in the design of buildings, uh, public spaces, and other infrastructure but many actions uh, both uh, in the European Union and in partner countries need uh, external support through incentives, uh, grants and additional resources. So I would like just to tell um, thanks again for a very interesting event. And um, as it was said um, in the opening speech, let's work together for a green, competitive and uh, inclusive Europe. Thank you very much. Vida, thanks a lot. Everything was summarized very well, and uh, that's that's the 
I would say that's the good start because we will hear the Green Deal and digital transformation and that the same question, technology is the answer, but what was the question? We will hear it again and again. And uh, that is good to have this platform and, and our cooperation between EU and, uh, and Eastern partnerships. So that, that is something where we will come back with some other issues and, and discuss uh, another important uh, questions. Thank you for being here today and sharing your uh, ideas and sharing your opinions. Uh, I hope that you will enjoy the rest of the green day, probably outside, not only working hardly in the office and uh, nice afternoon, nice evening for everyone. Thanks for participating. There is a small remark about the Bauhaus uh, award prize uh, made on chat. So you can uh, browse a little bit about that. If you missed something uh, from this uh, webinar, then uh, you can find it afterwards in, uh, in our archive of the organization uh, who, who was uh, hosting this in, in their YouTube channel. And at the end, I would like to say thank you for uh, organizers, especially for Agita Kaupuja, Sandra Berzin and Janis Upenieks, for uh, my colleagues here in Latvia who took the let's say the backstage of the webinar that it would run successfully. And thank you for translators uh, that we could understand, understand us very well. Thanks a lot and take care and bring those messages to your local authorities.